Welcome to the Tech Bytes podcast from the Packet Pushers. Our sponsor today is Fortinet, and we're going to talk to a customer of theirs using multiple Fortinet products, including firewalls, the firewall analyzer, Fortinet security fabric, the endpoint security client, and more. Our guest is Bill Pulte. He is CIO of the Educational Services Unit, and they provide education services to public schools in Nebraska. Bill, welcome to the podcast. And to get us started, can you just briefly describe what the Educational Services Unit is? I mentioned public school support, but give us a little more detail. Yeah, absolutely. First of all, thank you very much for having me. So when I took this job three years ago, my family and friends didn't know what an educational service unit was either. So <laughs> okay. I, uh, I'm not surprised that others don't always get it. But um, we do collect tax dollars and then we're charged with providing those services back to school districts, typically services that they can't provide on their own. So we've got higher level uh, technicians sometimes and developers and, and some of those types of services. Okay, so you're providing stuff like that to schools because it's just more financially feasible for one person to do. It's almost like a service provider. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that we do that not every educational service unit does, but we land internet access here for all of our districts. So we're we're essentially an internet provider for the districts. Okay, so this leads us into the discussion around firewalls. And my understanding is that you got introduced to Fortinet because school districts in the state happened to adopt uh, Fortinet's FortiGate firewalls, and you liked them well enough that you wanted to bring them into the ESU. Is that what happened? Yeah, so I was not at ESU at the time. I was at one of the districts, uh, Papillion La Vista. But what's interesting, Nebraska's got a a great program here in the state called Network Nebraska, and it, it provides internet access to school districts around the state and their aggregation points. Um, And ESU just happens to be an aggregation point. So at the time, I was using a a competitor to Fortinet, and all we were doing was stateful firewall. But a lot of Network Nebraska was moving to Fortinet. So when we had an RFP come up, it made a lot of sense for us to go with their security solution. And then a few years later, as I moved over to ESU, we've just kind of stayed with that and we've just kept adding services that that are provided by Fortinet have just started adding those services and we've been uh, pleased with everything that we've gotten from them at this point. Firewalls are firewalls from some perspective, right, Bill? So what what did you latch on to that you grabbed here and said, yes, this is the, I want the Fortinet thing. It wasn't just the RFP and other people in the state using it. You, You liked this thing. Yeah. Oh, we absolutely did. We we ran it through its paces as we did the RFP, and I agree with you to to an extent. You know, a firewall is a firewall if you're doing uh, stateful firewalls. But as we added, wanted to add services, and yes, that a lot of these firewalls then do a lot of these services. But as we ran the FortiGate through its paces, we really saw higher bandwidth coming through as we turned services on. So. At the time, we were just stateful firewall, but we've added in antivirus, we've added in application control, we've added in DNS, intrusion intrusion prevention, web filtering, and VPN. So, uh, and we've just been super pleased every time we turn a service on, we just don't see that much degradation of our, our access. Got it. And that's an important feature because a lot of times when uh, your firewall, uh, which is also running multiple functions... Uh, you turn them on and you see performance go down <laughs> right. to, to the point of it being the butt of jokes. Here's the performance. Yeah, but did you turn? Oh, you want me to turn services on? Oh, that's different. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the other number. Here's the hidden right. data Every sheet. No, you're 100% right. Everybody always gives you their number when you've got no services on. Oh, yeah, we can do we can do 20 gig or whatever it is. And then you start asking about services and you just watch that number plummet. So in addition to the firewalls, you mentioned other products, and one of them is the 40 Analyzer, which my understanding is that's uh, essentially an event and security log collector. You're using that, and you're also using it essentially to serve other schools. Can you talk more about that? Yeah. So my focus for the last three years since I've got here is to really focus on providing services for districts that all our districts can use. Currently, we have 18 districts that we work with. 16 of them are, are using FortiGates. And so... As we looked at adding to the security fabric a little bit and how do we get some of those, these reports done or this reporting done, Forta Analyzer made a lot of sense to us. And one of the things we really loved about it was the ability to do multi-tenancy. So we can, we can carve off different aspects for districts and say, hey, you're going to get this much space. And so we spent a little bit much on our, our Forta Analyzer, but this is what I love about educational service units in the state of Nebraska. 
even though we spent an extra $40,000 on our Forda analyzer, it was still a lot cheaper than if every district had to, had to go buy their own. And so now we're allowing districts to use that space and we can manage it for them. Um, and I just think it's a win-win for everybody. And in terms of uh, that multi-tenancy, if I'm a school district and I need to, for some reason, go in and look at some logs to you know, investigate an event, I don't have to dig through everybody's. You can just peel off the logs that I need for my district. Is that the idea? Or my particular firewall? Yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. So you know, if, if we've got Elkhorn Public Schools, for instance, and, and they've got their logs in there, they're only seeing their logs. They're only going through their pieces. So that's one of the things that, that was essential to us because we don't want districts seeing other districts information we want to be able to secure that district to district do you have a sense of scale of this device well we bought it with the idea that we could do about 12 districts so we yeah we could scale higher if we'd bought the the larger one uh, or had gone even larger but we know that not every district is going to take every service that we we use. So we said, well, we're this is a five-year purchase. We're going to do this in such a way that we can do 12 school districts on this. And then we give every school district, we carve out space based upon size. So uh, every school gets 1.5 uh, terabytes, I believe, of storage space there wow. um, is kind of how we do that. Mm -hmm. Do you have a sense of how often individual school districts are coming in to, to look at logs and, and play with 40 Analyzer? Yeah, I think that's district by district. One of the problems with education right now in general is that for years, nobody has had, everybody has, their focus has been outside of education from a security realm. And so education hasn't put the money into hiring CISOs and doing things like that. And so it's just kind of fallen back on a, a network administrator most of the time. Um, and I've been one of those network administrators in a school district, and you've got 20 things on your plate. And sometimes the last thing to worry about is, uh, did I look at the logs today? And so what happens is districts are waiting to see if there's an event and then they get back into them. So I don't think at this point we're seeing that push to be super proactive with it. But in the next few years, and we're starting to see changes around cybersecurity insurance, you know, that, that other industries saw years ago, we're starting to see those in education. So I think we're going to get to the point where districts are going to have to, or educational service units are going to have to hire security officers who are more proactive with this. And you'll be prepared for them when that happens. Yep. Those are the conversations we're having. Uh, I've had two conversations just today focused on, on that exact piece because the state of Nebraska, there's one major insurer for, for schools, and they're asking people to fill out a survey around cybersecurity. And, and if you don't fill it out correctly, you know, you could have your, your ransomware piece dropped. And so there's going to be a focus here in the next six months to make sure that everybody can fill out this survey appropriately and people feel good about the security they have in place. Okay. That's really interesting because cyber insurance is getting a lot more attention because of ransomware attacks. And it sounds like you're saying this ability to do analysis and investigation and have logs and have sort of a forensic capability could affect premiums, essentially. Yeah, absolutely. And in that piece wasn't on there directly, but this has to be renewed every year. And so we, we realized that the questions, the 13 questions that are being asked this year aren't going to be the 13 questions that they ask next year. Mm -hmm. The 13 questions they asked this year, you know, one might be, do you have multi-factor authentication? Well, that might be no for some people, yes for some people right now. Five years from now, I think that that might be everybody's doing it. So what are going to be the next things that these insurance companies want to know you can do? And, and I think these, these analysis and these reading these logs is going to be a huge piece of that in the future. So did you have Fortinet deployed during the pandemic? Uh, and if so, did it play a part in your remote work, your hybrid work uh, strategy for either employees or students, teachers, faculty? Yeah, so we are the largest ESU in the state. We serve about 85,000 students every day on our network. Conservatively, we have 110,000 to 120,000 network devices on the network. And one day in March, none of those devices showed up. They all stayed at home. And, and uh, that was definitely different. And it took us a while to catch up, especially with the students, because they didn't have, you know, remote accounts, they didn't have a lot of that stuff 
in a number of situations. I think the thing that we felt great about was that we were using the VPN client specifically here at ESU. We run a finance system as well. And we were already using that system. So the EMS client was already on the computers. VPN was already there. All we had to do was move some employees into the correct Active Directory group, and they had they had access into the network. It was uh, seamless. It was uh, unbelievably smooth, and we had very little issues with that. Now, if you want to talk to me about students getting access, that's a different conversation, and, and that that's a much more difficult conversation because not everybody's internet's the same at home and stuff like that, but. From a staff perspective, we felt very, very good about how well things went and how quickly they went. I got the call Sunday on a Sunday night saying that we were going to close the office. It, only administrators were coming in on Monday. And by Monday afternoon, I think we had everybody who needed access in. We had access in for them. It just worked. It, it did. It seems like. And, you know, salespeople come in and they always say that every salesperson who's been in my office over the last 20 years has said, oh, our product just works. And I find that to be true about 10 percent of the time. And with, <laughs> with Fortinet, it was true. So, well, I, I paused. I was waiting for you, the other shoe to drop and you just like trailed off. I'm like, it, it just worked. It yeah, just worked. That's... OK, <laughs> that never happens. So. You've clearly had a lot of experience with Fortinet products. Are you considering bringing in others? And, you know, do you see any trade-offs with sort of putting all your security eggs in one basket? Yeah, oh, we absolutely do. We are looking at doing some other projects specifically around endpoint security. We are using the endpoint security product, but do we need to be doing other things? Um, you know, we, we are an Office 365 shop, so do we need to be doing things from that standpoint as well? To, to to try to mitigate anything that that might be coming in you know I think that what scares everybody is the zero day attacks and having multiple pieces in place is going to help that you know one of the other things we did and this isn't around security but it just came around that idea of hey the product works we did put in the Fortinet phone system as well and part of the Part of the decision around that that was the fact that hey these the firewalls are working so well the analyzers working so well they put a bid in on the phone system and we we're like you know all it is is we're going to add this one little device and and the phone devices and it, it it's just worked for us as well you know it's a it's a SIP solution that we just don't we don't really struggle with. I mean the <laughs> the value of it just works is really significant especially yep. for. What I presume is, you know, you don't have a lot of uh, disposable IT resources at your fingertips. Yeah, no, you're. That's one of the biggest things. You know, I'm I'm here late tonight. We've got our board meeting to approve the budget, and we just do not have what what a banking industry might have when they say, "Oh, we're going to do cybersecurity. We're going to need X amount more percentage or whatever it is." You know, my percentage increase is going to be around 1%, but I'm going to have to do all these other things. And so the more I can tie multiple systems together and and work with a single partner is such a benefit to me. Um, and Fortinet has been that partner. I've just been blessed that, and it truly is a partnership um, that we feel like we have with Fortinet to the point that. Uh, 16 of our 18 districts have gone out and bought Fortinet firewalls, and we've got another one that I think will be coming on board this fall or this winter as well. It's just that one holdout. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so phones. Uh, how, I, I didn't actually know that Fortinet did phones. I do know they do APs as part of their portfolio. Is that something you're also looking at? Yeah, it is. We're set to replace all our access points here next spring, and Fortinet will definitely be a player in that. We'll probably go out and get quotes, but but we feel very good about the the Fortinet product around that. To the point that that you know we've looked at the access points, and it does everything we need it to do. So so I highly suspect that a year from now we will be using Fortinet uh, APs as well. 
right. Maybe we'll have you back to talk about it. Uh, thank you, Bill, for joining us. And thanks to Fortinet for being a sponsor. If you want to find out more about their security fabric, head on over to Fortinet.com. We'll also have a link in the show notes uh, to take you right there. Uh, sponsors make what we do at Packet Pushers possible, including technical podcasts. There are hundreds and hundreds of free episodes along with our community blog, which you can find at PacketPushers.net. And if you wouldn't mind, you can follow us on Twitter at Packet Pushers. Find us on LinkedIn and rate us on Apple Podcasts. And last but not least, remember that too much networking would never be enough.